So, here goes nothing. Um, it's been a bit since I've made much content at all. Uh, for those of you who were there for the uh, stream, you know that I'm basically back. Um, but every time that I've been saying that I'd be back, um, I've pretty much not been, and that's a shame. Um, so basically, uh, I could make one of those YouTube videos where, like, the YouTuber says that they went through severe, like, psychological stress and uh, a long series of other things, um... But I figure it'd be better to just get back on the horse. Like, even though all that would be true, even though I've been, like, you know, dealing with some pretty not easy psychological stuff. Um, and that's compounded by the um, looming threat of not being able to pay rent and shit like that. You know, during a recession and a food shortage. It's it's fantastic timing. Um you know, there is a lot of stuff like that, but um, basically, I figured it's best to just do it, you know, just get back into a video, and, uh, you know, those of you who like this kind of content can like, share, subscribe, etc., but basically, I figured the next, uh, the next video, the, the, the video that I should do when I came back was um, talk about the exploitation of the poor for reality TV. Um, I'm talking about extreme cheapskates. The content machine on YouTube loves this show. You know a YouTuber who does this sort of content where they will find an episode of extreme cheapskates and help America and the world mock that person. It's easy content. It's it's gutter level easy. Like, you don't have to put any effort into it at all. You just have to say, <laughs> look at that fucking poor person. Look at that zany shit that poor person is doing. But, um, you know, this video about extreme cheapskates isn't like that. Because I've got a bone to pick with the concept of the show uh, and the network that airs it. Um, for those of you who don't know about this show, which, God, we're, we're, we're only not a part of my, my knowledge base. Like, were I only in your shoes to not know what Extreme Cheapskates is? It's a show where they use a reality TV show format to go to a poor person's house or observe their daily life outside of a house. And look at all their cost-cutting measures. Point at them and laugh. It's basically a way to bully and peer pressure people into being more conformist with the machine. You know? That's what it is. Um, and I, I wanted to talk about it. Because we're in a recession and food shortage. I should know I'm basically broke. Um, and... I've also been basically below poverty my whole life. Now, by the world's standards, no. You know, by the world's standards, I'm doing fucking great. The world, like, 99% um, is, is doing materially much worse than me. Um, at least from a capitalist standpoint. Like, but in, in terms of this country, um, I'm pretty much fucked. And um, the extreme cheapskates model is to find somebody like me who does zany shit, like reuse their, their yogurt containers or their, uh, their, their chopsticks because they buy these reusable ones instead of a drawer full of silverware because it's cheaper. Um, find those people, mock them. That's the entire business model. Play the, play the clown music in the background. Use those reality stinger effects. Use the, like, you know, fucking standard reality TV bullshit. Like, do you want Jersey Shore but with poor people that we're supposed to dislike? That's what it is. 
and and I hate it. I've I've hated it since basically the moment I found out about it. For instance, this chick who, you know, obviously there's some tension in her relationship, but obviously they played up the tension because it's reality TV and it's not real. Um, this chick would put like, uh, she, she put like reused pasta sauce on her pasta and then she put that in the dishwasher to cook it rather than anything else. And yeah, that might be a little extreme, especially since the people she fed it to didn't like it. But we shouldn't fucking see that. We shouldn't fucking see that. It's poverty porn. We shouldn't see that she did such a dramatic cost-cutting effort that the family didn't like her because... It's none of our fucking business. And and I get that, you know, these people sign releases and shit and they probably get paid. But is it worth it? Is is the collective, like, dignity of poor Americans worth it? I don't think so. Um, I think that what this show is designed to do is get you to think that anything less than total participation in the state capitalist machine is laughable and you should be bullied for it just like these people are that's what i think i think it's evil i think it's corrupt and i think it's sick and i think it uh, it demonstrates a broader set of problems in culture where we live at the expense of each other and don't care about the sociological or sociopolitical effects of our beliefs and actions and attitudes. Um, and, and I think that this whole thing, like, it's not like this is the worst reality TV show, but it's fucking up there. When you're dealing with the Kardashians, you're dealing with rich chicks being rich. Same with the Jersey Shore. Same with Big Brother. Basically, the contestants on those shows are designed to get you in, like uh, invested in pop culture. That sucks asshole. But you know what this does? Um, it, it, it doesn't make you angry at, you know, the rich, which might actually be a reasonable doorway into some reasonable action against the system, this makes you dislike poor people. And, and it's not just that. They find poor people who are living zany lives. Like a guy who moves from hotel or like uh, fr from house sitting job to house sitting job or hotel to hotel, and he just lives off of them. You know. He he goes from like place to place to place to place, and he carries around this like this hotel luggage cart or something. I forget. I I watched like episodes a while back, to 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 sort of prime myself for this video, and and I didn't make the video until now. <laughs> I'm not, like, looking at notes or anything. I am about to read some stuff from Wikipedia. But basically, um, the the whole vibe of the show is, look at these zany poor people and what they're doing to survive in this hellscape. Laugh at them instead of realizing that they're close to you and realizing that you should unite with them. Laugh at them. It's zany fun. <laughs> you know? That's that's my impression of the fucking show. And they don't show the most extreme cheapskates. They don't show those people. Because the most extreme cheapskates get mocked on other reality TV shows, like Doomsday Preppers. Do you have a fucking <laughs> bunker? Are, are you living on solar and wind... Do you recycle your water? Do you have a garden? 
Do you do you try to live sustainably and off the grid? Well, 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 these people got a show for you. You for the for the, the low low price of your dignity can appear on this show, reveal all your secrets because that's the exact way to prepare for an apocalypse, by the way, to reveal all your secrets as a doomsday prepper and show people exactly what you have. This is where I am. This is what I have. That's what you're saying. That's 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 something that you, you should do. You should you should reveal your entire location. You should you should tell people where you are off the grid so that if they ever do get into that situation and weren't prepared themselves, they can come take your shit. They can come be a threat to you specifically. That's a whole other ball of wax. But basically, the the vibe of it is that Extreme Cheapskates does not show the most Extreme Cheapskates. Extreme Cheapskates shows poor people and wants you to laugh at them. And even Doomsday Preppers, it, it, it oftentimes isn't showing the homely old lady with her pantry full of, like, preserves and, and like... <laughs> you know, fucking rice and beans stacked for for, for 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 like three months supply. They're not showing her. They're not showing the dude who sustainably raises his own like like produce and and animals and and does everything himself and tries to live in seclusion away from society. They're not showing you that guy in doomsday preppers. They're not showing you that guy in extreme cheapskates. Both shows are designed to exploit your inner desire to fit in by saying, that's the other. Fuck that guy. He didn't do what we wanted him to. He's he's evil. He's the other. Heretic, traitor, get him. <laughs> that's what it's for. It's, it's fucking evil. Both shows... But Extreme Cheapskates isn't showing you those Extreme Cheapskates because that show is level one. Like, Doomsday Preppers has a much lower f fucking rating, <laughs> as far as I remember, than Extreme Cheapskates, and it certainly doesn't get the coverage that these other things do. Um, like, extre Extreme Cheapskates gets coverage to this day, even though the seasons are gone. Even though it's not on anymore, it still gets coverage. And the worst part of all of this, to me, at least from a rhetorical perspective, is the channel it's on. Because the channel it's on is TLC. And for those of you who don't know, that channel is supposed to be the learning channel. And it was supposed to originally be educational content. You can go there to learn. But then, in the late 1990s, it got acquired by Discovery Channel. Discovery Channel and Discovery Networks in general are mostly ass cancer. The, the whole motive of modern day Discovery shows is to not discover anything. And to sensationalize as much as possible. The, the closest that they had, that I, the two shows that I remember that were at all okay, were um, How It's Made and Mythbusters. But they also are responsible for History Channel and its slow churn into not being about history, but speculation about ancient aliens from the most zany, least credible people. That's how you got the aliens meme. Um, or, or Pawn Stars. Do you want to watch Pawn Stars 24 fucking 7? I got a Pawn Stars YouTube recommendation in my recommendations. I hate Pawn Stars. I hate History Channel. Because both of those things are designed to dilute the idea of history into its most salacious and profitable mode. You know, we're not talking about history 
in any interesting sense. We're not talking about alternate history. We're not talking about, like, maybe some things that people got wrong. We're talking about speculating of ancient aliens. And hey, this guy tried to sell some shit at my pawn shop. Let's have some reality TV drama about that with all the same noises that they use in every other fucking reality show, including Extreme Cheapskates. Like, Discovery could have been a documentarian, like, network. Instead, everything they touch turns into Kardashians for even more boring people. And that's exactly what Extreme Cheapskates is. It's, it's, it's the most base, least fucking ethical content you could imagine for the alleged thing that they're trying to do. Like, the Learning Channel should be a channel where you can learn. But what are you instead doing? You're closing off parts of your mind to whole groups of people you don't fucking know. And then you're using that to launch your audience at them. You're using that to launch your peer groups at them. You're using it as leverage in marital disputes. Like, oh, you wouldn't want to be like those extreme cheapskates, would you? Just buy it! That's what it is. And I hate it. And I've hated it for a while. And I needed to get it off my chest. I figured that this would be a good first video to come back with. Um, you know, if you want to be a real extreme cheapskate, farm your own food. Live underground so that your house is well insulated. And so that you can recirculate uh, the same cooling and heating, like, much more effectively. Um, you know... Fucking get highly reusable everything. Learn to cook with less machines. G go to grocery outlet instead of fucking, you know, World Foods Market or, or fucking Whole Foods or like My Fresh Basket. I came to Spokane and I saw that and I was like, that's one of the most bougie stores I've ever seen. It's like my fresh or my green basket or something. That's one of the most bougie stores I've ever seen. I didn't even go inside. I just saw it from the outside and I was like, I'm not going there ever. Um, You know, the whole... So you, you do that. You get solar. You get wind. When they figure out thorium reactors, you could get one of those to even save even more money. Um, you know, you, you, you gasify your trash so that you don't have to go to the dump as much or, you know, use as many municipal services. Um, you know, <laughs> like so that you can use that for fuel for a generator later. You, you, you use like burnt things to help you filter water so that you can recirculate water through your home and make sure you get the maximum use out of it. You um you grow your own food, you raise your own livestock, you like reuse whatever containers you can, uh if you if you do get containers. You know? You 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 try to live as sustainably, which translates to cheaply every single time. That's what you do if you want to live cheaply. That's what you do if you want to be a more extreme cheapskate than any extreme cheapskate they will show you. But they won't show you people like you could be. Because they don't want you to be like that. They want to keep you down! And that's why they tell you to mock these people. That's why they tell you that anything less than massive consumerism is a problem. That's why they tell you that this culture is the only way or the best way or like American exceptionalism, greatness, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. The society that produced extreme cheapskates um, characters, I'm going to call them that because I know they're playing it up as well. 
the society that produced that is the same society that puts you in a food shortage and a recession. The same society that monopolized the formula industry so that babies are dying right now. The same society that sent tens of billions to Ukraine while Americans starve. <laughs> 20 billion could solve homelessness yearly. If they added that 20 billion to the budget or moved it away from something like the military industrial complex to the homeless, they could do that. And it'd be cheaper than all the other fucking assistants that they're getting. Because the assistance that they're getting is hugely complicated. And the fact that they're on the streets uh, a lot of the time, or in, you know, compromised sh shelters and housing situations, that leads to drug abuse, that leads to alcoholism, that leads to a bunch of shit that they're going to have to treat later. It leads to fights, it leads to crime, which they're going to have to, you know, pay for, you know, treatments there and jail there. It leads to all these fucking things. Poverty is the key driver behind social ills. And instead of letting you know that, instead of telling you that maybe the problem isn't poor people, they want you to laugh at them. And I think that's cruel, evil, and sick. Welcome back to my channel, those of you who've been gone for a while. This was Jeremiah Harding. Smash the state.